Okay, today we are going to talk about our first encoding scheme. This will be shell encoding. Okay, let's quickly recap. S will be our source alphabet, A is our code alphabet. Alphabet containing code words. It looks like this. S is a symbol, A is its binary representation or any encoded representation. Why shell encoding is encoding scheme? Because it does this process. From For each uh, symbol in our source alphabet we make another corresponding symbol from code alphabet. In shell encoding we have symbols with their probabilities. And first step is to sort symbols. We sort symbols by their probabilities in a descending order and if symbols have the same probability, they are sorted alphabetically. So descending, descending probability from big to small. Okay, now it's kind of tricky part. We have to find the thing which is called bx. Actually, it is nothing but sum of the probabilities up to some symbol uh, if we take our sorted sequence. I think example will explain it better. We have faced zero symbols in our sorted sequence before E. So Bx for E will be zero. We have faced E before B, only E. Thus the probability is 0 0.35. For F it will be the sum of previous symbols we have faced, so it will be 0, 0.55. And uh, respectively for A, you can think of it, I'll give a result, uh, a, a result right now, this will be 70, 80 and 90. Okay, once again, Bx for some symbol is the sum of all probabilities for, of the symbols we have seen before this particular symbol in this sequence. I think a very good idea to form our coding scheme as a table. Next step will be to make binary codes for, uh, for our symbols according to these probabilities according to the probabilities of bx. We just transform these fractional decimals uh, into binary. I have prepared it already, I will write it down now. Actually, this doesn't have to be binary code in any case. It can be given that you have to transform into ternary code using these probabilities we've got on bx step. I uh, assume you can do that. And uh, actually, as you already know, the results can be recursive when transforming fractional numbers into binary. Thus, I recommend to use like four or five uh, digits after, yeah. On the next step, we will counter it uh, in a very elegant manner. We will have to find Lx. Lx is the length. How many symbols after dot we will use as a binary, ternary or whatever arity representation at the end. For example, if Lx is 3, we will use 0, 0, 0. Lx differs from symbol to symbol and I will give you the formula right now. I don't think we need our sequence already. So, the formula for Lx is the following. Lx equals... So, this is the formula for Lx. It's pretty simple. This sign means C ceiling. We round it to the next integer. Uh, and uh, at the end, for each symbol, we produce separate Lx. For example, yeah, this was just an example. I have calculated them already, so I will fill the table. Okay, I also calculated one L X uh, for for E, uh, and thus you can see here that it is the length from our binary code. 
other binary codes are here. You can check me if you want or do the same as yourself um, as your own code or whatever. Uh, I think it's clear now. One last time, let's generalize it to an algorithm. So, step by step, you can pause the video and write it down if you want. And yeah, first of all, we sort symbols. Then for each element, we find bx. Uh, then we represent bx for each symbol uh, in uh, our ART system. For example, binary ternary, etc. This is an example. Let's say in ternary system. And then we form code words for symbols using first lx from an array representation. We ignore the first zero, which stands before the dot. That's it.